Does COVID-19 ultimately spell the end of the U.S. public school system as we know it? Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate this turbulent world. The behavior of the teachers' unions in recent months in much of the country has been a disgrace. They have repeatedly and unnecessarily kept kids out of the classroom. Their unconscionable actions will, over time, lead to radical changes as to how American children are educated. The traditional public school system will be going the way of wireline telephones, fax machines, and typewriters. Experience has demonstrated in Europe, Japan, and elsewhere that schools with proper precautions can be safely reopened. The damage of keeping children at home in terms of learning lost, mental depression, the hit to family earnings because parents having to stay at home to look after the children vastly exceeds any harm from COVID-19. The CDC says opening classrooms is the way to go. Yet union bosses keep saying no to in-class teaching, shaking down politicians for more concessions and more money. Clearly, union leaders don't give a hoot about the kids. This appalling behavior will have profound repercussions short-term and long-term. Parents, by the millions, are shocked and coming to the sad conclusion that the current school system in all too many cases has abandoned them and their offspring. Moreover, realization is growing that many schools pre-COVID were not doing a good job for their students, as test scores sadly demonstrated time and again. This grim realization is leading to growing movements for more genuine school choice. In Boston, for example, the continued closure of public school classroom teaching led to parents of thousands of children applying to the city's Catholic school system. There are only limited alternatives, however, to the legacy system today, primarily charter schools. Some states have effectively employed various forms of scholarship programs financed via state income tax credits. There are privately financed programs for kids from lower income households, such as the Children's Scholarship Fund. Of course, if parents can afford it, they can place their kids in private schools. But the legacy school system has the powerful advantage of being funded by the government, mostly via property taxes. In the future, however, watch for movements around the country for a fundamental change. Those tax dollars would follow the child, not the school. In other words, if you send a child to a non-public school, the per-student money would be transferred from the public school to that alternative. This won't happen overnight, but the union's short-sighted, harmful actions will lead to a profound change, and American kids will be the winners. I'm Steve Forbes. Thank you for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions, and I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh,